Hello everyone, Larry Satchwell here. Back in the shop again. It's a chilly, cold day in Georgia. The birds are really active out there. It's supposed to be in the 20s tonight. You know, it really doesn't get that cold here in Georgia that we probably need a roosting box, but I'm not going to give up on it. For example, the coldest day so far in January was January 10th. It was 23 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's about negative 5 degrees Celsius. Back in uh, December on Christmas Day, at Christmas night actually, it was the coldest night we've had this season, and that was 21 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 6 Celsius. But our averages are around 30 degrees, and that may not be cold enough for chickadees to warrant finding a roosting box. But, and again, I've mentioned this before, uh, there's an article, great article by Scott Shalloway, and I'll put that link in the description. And in that article, he describes a uh, Candace Stewart, the owner of a wild bird center in Denver, came up with individual roosting boxes that were four inches wide, three inches tall, and three inches deep. I made a little template of that. That's not very big. My son-in-law, Brandon, gave me this big piece of uh, cedar, and it's just a little bit over seven inches wide. I'm gonna cut it in three inch sections. It's got a big split here I need to deal with. And then I'm gonna put cypress on the front and the back and try to make, I think I can get four individual roosting boxes out of this. So the first thing I need to do is cut this in half with the bandsaw. I'm going to be using Type Bond 3, this uh, waterproof outdoor glue. A couple of them had cracks in it that I didn't see until I cut it in half. So these are going to be easy to glue back together. But in any bandsaw box construction, you've got to cut through it uh, to create the cavity. And you try to go with the grain. And that's what I did with these boxes. I went with the grain. And that conceals the... The line pretty well. And this is not anything that uh, I'm going to be presenting to my sweetheart, so uh, I don't think the chickadees will mind. Uh, cedarwood is prone to crack like this. Just have to figure out how it goes back on, and I think it's like that. So we'll get one up here. There's going to be a face board going on this anyway. So it's important to get these even. And then where I cut it internally, and I'm not sure how critical it is to glue that right there, but Type on 3 takes a little bit longer to set up, so I probably won't come back to this until tomorrow. So the clamps are off and I've played around with several different designs and my conclusion was that if I did it this way I'd have to put a piece of wood here and then it would be very difficult to clean it out. So what I think I'm going to do is this board has a big crack in it but that's not an issue. What I'm going to do is use this as the front and that crack goes between the two and with this as the front I already have this piece of cypress glued up for another project. Uh, in fact, I glued it up so long ago, I'm not even sure what the project was. And this will give me plenty of space here to use this as the back of it. And I can mount it up here. And then with these two, I've, I've decided to have these as standalones. And I've got this one by 
six of cypress that I've had for a really long time. It's not, it's uh, rough sawn, so it's uh, not the full length here, but I can get a back out of here and a front, and I've got some other scraps of cypress. So I'm gonna make these two standalone condos. I guess these would, uh, this would be standalone duplexes. And this is the condo. So I think the first thing I'll do, because this wood is so unstable here at the ends, I'm going to go ahead and glue this on here so that it'll add some stability. And I'm gonna drill the holes and then I can go ahead and glue the backs onto these. Gluing on end grain like this isn't the strongest, so I'll probably end up putting a couple of screws in it as well. Well, that's really on there solid. I don't think I'm gonna put screws in here yet. Before I put this on the back, I marked the front. And on this particular one, I'm gonna make holes here in the front. And on the rest of them, I'm gonna make holes on the side. And I think it's time to do that now. Unfortunately, the Shalloway um, article doesn't say anything about where to place the entrance hole. It does say inch and a quarter, and that's what these holes are. So I've varied it. On here's the top, over here it's the bottom. Same on this front-facing one. I didn't know if it was supposed to be front-facing. I've got one on the bottom, one on the top. And then on the condo here, I've got one in the middle, one on the top one on the top and one on the bottom. Time to screw the, in this case, the back to this, and this will become the front. I don't think the screw length here is critical. Inch and a quarter for this three quarter inch wood will be fine, but I have these leftover screws from something So I'm going to use these. Now I'm going to be taking these down in the spring because this is going to be nothing but a place for a wasp to build their nest in the summer. So I'll mount it with these two screws and then I can clean it out from the back. Same goes with these. This is just a piece of scrap I had left over from that piece and I'm screwing it down the same way. Got lots of meat here in the corner. Uh, even though this has a big crack here, it is in solid wood, so it's not an issue. Well, let's go hang these up. I mounted the one that has the holes in the front here on the little room we keep our horse feed in, down by the barn. It's in a very protected area. This is, it's got a nice overhang on it. So we'll see. So I put the other one on the north side of the chicken coop here. Kind of the northwest side, it's out of the wind. 
It's right above Abby's solitary bee. And you can see all the holes are filled in that. Uh, I think this spring I will go ahead and open those back up. It's really been productive here. The condo I put way up here at the top of the playhouse. I'm not sure you can tell, but there was a pile of bird poop right up there at that corner. So I know they've been resting there at probably at night. While I was up there, I opened up that box. Nothing's been in it, it. And I haven't opened this one. But maybe that'll be my next video. I have been watching these two boxes with my trail cam. And I checked it two weeks ago and nothing had happened. We recorded no movement at all, except for occasionally when we went up on the porch way over there it would it would trigger it but, but so far no action yet this winter we'll see i'll keep you posted thanks for watching